David. Today we're going to talk about natural language processing. This is the way that we can speak in ordinary English or whatever your native language is and have the computer understand what we're saying without having to explicitly list every possible way we can say a certain thing. And there's a tool that Microsoft offers. It's called LUIS, which stands for Language Understanding Information Service, that helps us build natural language processing. We can get to this from lewis.ai right here. And Lewis is part of the, the Microsoft Cognitive Services, which are a set of tools that allow you to do machine learning without having to know a whole lot about machine learning, without having to do the heavy lifting of machine learning. And I just signed into it here. You'll probably have to create an account and sign in yourself, but I've, I've already done that, so it took me right away to My Apps right here. If you don't see this, go right to this My Apps link here. And I can create a new app by clicking on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a vocabulary for things that I want my application to understand and ways that users might say those things. So I'm going to create one. I have to give this a name. I'm going to call it DG Test Lewis. I'll give it a, uh, a culture or language here. These ones are supported. English happens to be my native language, so I'll put that here. And then a description. This is totally optional, but I'll put in best Lewis app ever right here. And this creates an application here called DGTest Lewis, and it has entities, intents, and entities. You notice that they're, they're empty. There aren't any yet. It has a place to hold those things. Intents are things that I want my application to understand. These could be sentences. They could be questions. They could be commands. Something I want to be able to understand when somebody says something. There might be multiple ways they could say it, but I want it to boil down to a few understandable statements or questions. And these are parameters in those statements. So if there's things that will vary slightly within them, I can have a pattern with a, a placeholder that will have an entity there. Now, that might sound a little bit confusing, but probably the easiest way to show that is with an example. And there are some examples right down here under pre-built domains. You can see right here there's calendar and camera and communication, entertainment. And these are things for if you have an application that wants to understand how to order movie tickets or how to do home automation, for example. These are in there that can help you to do that. So I'll just pick one of these here. Um, how about um, this fitness one? And I'll grab that one here. And what that'll do is it'll populate a bunch of entities, a bunch of intents, and a bunch of utterances that are associated with intents, all of which have to do with tracking fitness. That's done right here. So I'll go up to intents, and now it's no longer empty. I have things like add note. Maybe I'm at the gym, and I want to keep a record of something that uh, I need to buy some more Gatorade. I don't know. Uh, log weight. I want to know, record that today I lost two pounds. Keep track of that. Know, know whether I'm gaining or losing weight. Logging activities. I did 30 push-ups today. I did 10 bench presses, etc. All these things are intense, but there are multiple ways of saying those intents. So, for example, if I wanted to log my weight, I could say, record weight today is 169 pounds. Record weight is 160 pounds, please. And I notice these are these are variables here. They're in blue because these are entities. So it, maybe my weight isn't 169 pounds. Spoiler alert, it's not. Um, but I can put in my exact weight here. I now weigh X. Record that, please. So these are different ways that I can ask the system to record weight. They all mean the same thing, log weight. And so there's a whole bunch of the three pages of utterances, all of which have to do with log weight. And in fact, these entities, these blue things on here that are variables, there's a bunch of them in here that were pre-populated when I added this uh, uh, this domain. Activity type, uh, food, meal type, I want to know it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, measurement, numbers, stat type, all sorts of things on here. And if I click on one of these, for example, if I click on um, the, uh, the number, you'll see the utterances that they show up in. So let's run today. 20,000 steps and burn more calories. That, that's an utterance that's associated with the add note entity. So each one of these utterances is associated with entity, and it's filtered by only those that had the fitness.number entity in it. All right. Um, now, in order to use this, we have to train it. All we've got some data here, but whenever we work with machine learning, we, we take that data and we train it. And what that does is it builds a machine learning model. And it's that machine learning model that 
is used when we want to actually uh, understand anything from this data. It doesn't go back to the original data, it goes back to our model, which is smaller and easier for the computer to understand. So once we have that model set up, then we can start using it. We can pass in sentences like, oh, let's record that I ran 12,000 st steps. And it will under it should understand that this intent was log activity. And it should also understand that I wanted to populate these entities as fitness number equals 12,000 and stat type equals steps. And we can test that right here with the test button. So let's do that. We'll enter one of these things here and say, record that I ran, let's say, uh, 1,000 steps. How about that? Enter. And it correctly said that this is a log activity. It's 90% sure that that's what that is. And if I inspect it, it'll go even further and say not only is it a log activity, but it knows that the variables in here, the stat type is steps, and is the number in here? Uh, it didn't grab the number here, so it's doing a pretty good job, but it's not doing 100%, probably because it's only 90% on here. Now we have a model, and we've, we're able to test it in this portal, but we don't want to distribute this portal to our users. We want to actually use it in our own applications, maybe a web application or a mobile application that we want to enable to understand natural languages. And the way that we're going to expose that is through a web service. We'll publish this model as a web service. The way we do that is through this button right here. We click on Publish. We say we're going to publish it to production right here. And it was that quick. It's done. I can click on the endpoints right here. And here is the endpoint that was just created right here. If I um, copy this here, then what I'll do is open up another browser here and paste it in. And you notice at the very end of this, I have Q equals. And that Q equals is where I'm going to put my utterances. And I do that, it'll tell me what entity it's associated with and what um, the the uh, edit, what intent is associated with what what entities there are. So right here, let's let's go down in here and do uh, let's say log weight here, for example. So I say, uh, can you record weight, please? That would be an utterance that's associated with the log weight intent. Let's do that right here under Q. We'll say, we'll say, can you record weight, please? Can you record weight, please? Right here. And this is a get to that URL. It's a simple web service. And it came back with some JSON. And here's the JSON. The query, can you record weight, please? It figured out that the top scoring intent was log weight. That's correct. It's 99% sure of that. If there was a close second, which there isn't, the second place is only 2%. But if there were, we've got some information about all of the possible intents and how well they matched up. Only log weight was even close to 100%. Down here on enter entities log weight, this this particular utterance has a, uh, a weight entity on here, and so it found that as a measurement right here. So all this information we can parse out in our application and use it in a way that we see fit. In this example, we have seen how to create a Lewis app, how to populate it with a pre-built domain. We've seen the association between the relationship between intents and utterances and entities, how to train that model, how to test that model inside of this portal, how to publish it out as a web service, and then how to consume that web service, in this case, just simply through the web browser. This is David. Thank you for watching.